بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. This is the sixth uh, lesson in عقيدة واسطية and we reach the statement of the Musannif Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala where he, where he says rahimahullah about the aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah he said bel yu'minuna bi anna Allah subhanahu laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa sami'ul basir fala yanfuna anhu ma wasafa bihi nafsuhu wala yuharifuna al kalam an mawadi'ihi so shaykh al islam ibn taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala he says rather the uh, as far as the belief of ahl sunnah wal jamaah he says that they believe after he after we mentioned in the last lesson we talked about those four ways in which ahl bid'a either negates or changes the meaning or uh, makes a comparison between Allah and His creation or asks how the kafiyah so we mentioned uh, um, tahrif wa ta'til wa ta uh, tahrif wa ta'til wa tukayif wa tamthil we mentioned all of those and we explained what they meant or what they mean and how Ahl Bid'ah, the various sects in Islam, those early sects, how they fell into those Shubahat. So then after explaining that Shaykh al-Islam, he says, rather, he says, so Ahl Sunnah does not do that. Rather, they believe that Allah, the most, the, the glorified, that nothing is in comparison to him and that he is the all seeing or all hearing and all seeing and that they do not meaning ahl sunnah they do not uh, negate anything from his his sifat that he described himself with nor do they change even a word or misinterpret even a single word from its correct meaning to the incorrect meaning. So Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they accept, as we mentioned before, they accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed in the Quran and what He has said subhanahu wa ta'ala about Himself in the Quran as as far as his description of himself subhanahu wa ta'ala and ahl sunnati wal jama'ah they accept what the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says about himself shaykh al islam he used in his text the statement he said laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa sami'ul basir which in fact is the is uh, an ayah where allah tabarak wa ta'ala says في كتابه الكريم في سورة الشورى قال سبحانه ليس كمثله شيء ليس كمثله شيء وهو سميع بصير الله سبحانه وتعالى says about himself that there is no there is nothing or no one uh, in compare uh, com compared to Allah سبحانه وتعالى there is nothing or there's nothing that can be compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ And He is the all-hearing and all-seeing. And from this ayah, as Shaykh al-Islam mentioned, this is a qa'idah azima in the religion of Islam. And especially in aqidah wa fi Bab al Asma'i wa Sifat. That this is a very important principle that Ahl Sunnah follows this principle and adheres to this principle. And this is one of the signs of Ahl Sunnah because, as, as we know, this whole treatise is about the creed of Ahl Sunnah. 
that this Qaeda says, there's nothing comparable to Allah. At the same time, Allah affirms for Himself that He possesses the characteristic which we are familiar with, which is hearing, that He is the all hearing. Al Basir. And He is the all uh, He is the all seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses these characteristics, and we mention about them. What's important for us also, another point that the ulama they bring about is that as we see, and, and especially we're related to the Arabic language, when Allah says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the word shay'un, referring to anything or something, and, and this is a negative, this indicates negative, laysa. The word laysa. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ Shay'un here is... Uh, nekira. Nekira in Arabic meaning it is, um, it is the, in its meaning it is general. Yufid al Amum. Nekira, Yufid al Amum. Because there's no Alif Walam. If there was Alif Walam here, then that would make it definite. And then that, that Alif Walam might, uh, you know, be evidence that this is something specified. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is negating everything. It's general. When he says shay'un, because of the tenween there, this means it's general. Everything, this negates everything. Everything. So, so in its meaning, laysa kamithli shay'un, meaning that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, negating everything. Uh, that that could possibly be compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lays kamithlishay. Nothing. There is nothing. So that you feed the amum. So here we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with the nafi, with negating. Negating that anything resembles him. Then in the second part here, Wahua as Sami'u al Basir. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms, He makes ithbat. He affirms for us that He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all hearing and all seeing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses those qualities. And that that lets us know that although the creation possesses, some of the creation possesses the ability to hear and see, it cannot be compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hearing and sight. Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala negates that in the beginning and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we know is perfect and He has kamal. His characteristics and this is one of the qawaid uh, so this is a qaida min qawaid fi bab al asma'i wa sifat. This is one of the principles from the many principles of al asma'i wa sifat is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not, do not associate anything to Him. He, he doesn't have anything that could be considered from, from His names and attributes that can even carry a meaning of imperfection. All of his divine names and characteristics are divine, and they all have uh, um, illustrate for us the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for example, if someone were to describe Allah by something other than what they found in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Sanir, meaning the maker. That the ulama they say this is permissible in the sense of saying this is from the Babel Akbar uh, or the Babel uh, Akbar. Sorry, that this is from. You can say this, but not giving him that actual name. You used it because it's true in the meaning that Allah created everything. He's Al-Khalik. He refers to Himself. He is the creator of the heavens and earth. So He is the maker of everything as well. But however, we do not 
give him that title. That is not Dalil, that, that is because we don't have evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah. That's one of that's one of his uh, n- his divine names. Or even in reference to an attribute, although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is he's the creator of everything. But a better example might be something where some people they give uh, they refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by names which do not denote perfection. And so any name that refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that does, that does not denote perfection, that it can also have a negative connotation as well, then we do not, uh, it cannot be referred to as a name or attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His divine names and attributes are perfect. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and hopefully as we go we'll try to bring some other examples as we get a little further uh, along in our study of this very important book. So what we wanted to illustrate here is as Shaykh al-Islam mentioned, he mentioned the verse which has nafi, negation, and ithbat, it has affirmation that Allah negates that there's any resemblance between his creation and him, and that is a rud or a refutation of the mumathila. Those people, those groups, those early groups who try to make a resemblance between Allah's creation. Say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, for example, they say Allah has hands, and we have hands, so Allah's hands are like such and such, or Allah's hands are like ours, or ours are like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, or they make, they make some sort of resemblance between Allah and His creation. So this ayat right here, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuting them. And this is in fact what we find from uh, the Christians and some other religions that make Allah subhanahu into either men, they refer to Allah as a man, or a spirit, or the sun, or they refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens, as some idol from amongst the various idols out there, uh, as many of the Hindus and the Sikhs and, and others have various different gods whom they worship. And when we look at in their religion, without even having to go and study, they usually refer to their their gods are usually in the form of men. You know, there's a type of anthropomorphism, or there's other references. There's so many different beliefs about who God is, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, with these various uh, religions, that it's difficult to keep up with them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly negates that in the Qur'an, any resemblance between him and his creation when he said Laysa kamithlihi shay'un there is nothing comparative uh, in comparison to him there is no one who you could make a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so regardless of when they make pictures of their gods like the Sikhs they have their picture of the 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 one who began their 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 faith and we have the Hindus they have various gods and pictures of elephants and this and that and the other whom they worship so in fact they believe that Allah is in that form of their those creatures but Islam rejects that in totality that's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejects that in totality. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ basir. So that is a rud, a refutation of the mumathala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the same verse when he makes ithbat, because ithbat is the opposite of nafi. Ithbat meaning to affirm, nafi meaning to negate. And when we negate, when we said the mu'attala, negation, this is also another word for uh, 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 negating something. When we, when we refer to the mu'attala, we're talking about those who yu'attal uh, sifat that they negate the divine characteristics or attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this very verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes the mu'attala. The ma'atala are refuted. Those people who negate. Why? Because Allah said, Allah made clear, Qala subhanahu, wa huwa sami'ul basir. He affirms that he possesses hearing and seeing. The ma'atala say, la, 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 la. Allah doesn't, Allah doesn't hear. Or they might affirm his name. They might say, huwa sami' 
ولكن بلا سمع he is the all hearing without possessing the characteristics of hearing the reason they do this the reason that many of these groups you'll find the Ashaira, the Mu'tazila, the Jahamiyyah a lot of them they, they made their beliefs came about because they were running from the other groups in Ahl Bidah what do I mean by this? for example the Mumathila the Mumathila so they say they make a resemblance though there are some groups that make a resemblance between Allah and His creation they make a resemblance Let's see if I have another pen here they make a resemblance between so the uh, the Mumathila for example Mumathila the Mumathila or those who make resemblance they try to make a resemblance resemblance between Allah and creation or his creation his creatures and his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala this is what the mumathila do the groups like the later the ashaira and perhaps the mu'tazila they ran away from this they said hey we don't want to make any resemblance, they, but they use their intellect. They say, we reject that mumathila. The, the Ashaid are not mumathila. But rather they fall into ma'atil to a greater or lesser extent, depending on the individual's creed or the particular sect's creed of the Ashaid. But they fall into, they become mu'atila because when they are running away from tashbih, or running away from making a resemblance between Allah and His creation, they actually fall into negating. They say, hey, no, we don't want to say that Allah rose above His throne because people rise above their chairs and people rise up from their chairs and so forth. So they try to avoid resembling, making a resemblance between Allah and His, cre his creatures or His creation and by running away from making a resemblance or trying to avoid making a, a, a resemblance between the, cre the, cre the creator and the creation then they end up negating they say no he doesn't rise above his throne you know so then they they and what they do because they don't make total ta'til the ashaira for example they then that's when they fall into tahrif the ashaira they make Tahrif. They begin to change the meaning of the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we mentioned before, Sheikh Salih bin Fawzan gave us those beautiful uh, benefits that every, uh, every muharraf, everyone who falls into distortion, it falls into negation. They, they, they are doing a type of negating. Okay, so the Asha'ira, for example, they are actually negating uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat for those sifat that they change. Because they only, print, mainly the Asha'ira, they affirm seven of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll talk extensively about some of these groups. I'm just trying to give us an idea on what happened with these sects and why Shaykh al Islam is uh, writing. Why, why he wrote this treatise and how it refutes the beliefs of those various groups. But we're going to give some very simple breakdowns of some of those main groups and what they believe. We'll talk about briefly about the Jahamiya. We'll talk about the Mu'tazila. We'll talk about the uh, Ashaira. And we'll probably, and, and especially those three, but possibly even the Qadariya and some other groups, and we will m draw it out very nicely and very simp simp uh, in a very simplistic form so that even 
the layman amongst Ahl Sunnah will hopefully gain some benefit and understand. We'll try to make it as easy and simplified as possible bi'idnillah to see how these people had went astray. And it will give us an idea about our Muslim brothers and sisters around us who have fallen, fallen into this type of creed. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us and them away from this, uh, these deviations. So just to quickly recap, this, this shows us here that uh, what we went over is we, we talked mainly about this ayat and how it ref refutes uh, those various groups that fell into uh, the various forms of negating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes and also how it refutes those who attempt to make a uh, resemblance between Allah and His creatures subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying that for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has hands and we have hands so that necessitates our hands resembling Allah's hands. Well that is batil as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa sami'ul basir that there is nothing comparable to him or nothing in his likeness and he is the all seeing and all hearing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negated or refuted also, the ma'attala are refuted in this ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself that he does possess uh, the qualities of hearing and seeing, but his are not like our qualities as we have here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't com make a comparison between Allah and his creation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes and his, na his attributes are perfect whereas we are weak and frail and limited and they cannot be compared to the Lord of the heavens and earth and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil